Hey guys, welcome back to another video on Game Edition. In today's video, we're going to be taking an in depth review on the Dell G515. So, what we're going to be looking at today in this video is uh, upgradability of this laptop, gaming performance, video editing and rendering in 4K, battery life, and answering your guys' questions from the last video I made on this laptop. So, first things first, let's jump into some gaming and we're going to be playing Forza Horizon 5 first. Just a quick note this laptop is in its highest performance mode with the with it plugged in, so everything like that is all sorted, it's in its highest performance mode. Okay, so we're now into Forza Horizon 5, and just before we get started, let's actually take a look at the video quality settings that I've got this on currently. So let's just get rid of that. There we are. Options, so if we go to graphics, you can see that I've got it on, well it should be on just medium, so let's actually put that back, don't know why I was on custom. So, as you guys can see, we're running medium-high settings, and in this game, medium-high settings on this kind of screen, where the screen isn't even that big, pretty good settings, the graphics look pretty good too still. So, let's save that profile. On video, you guys can see it is uh, running on medium-high. Now, a funny thing is, with this laptop, when you're playing Forza games, for some reason, when you turn up the FPS to 120, which is what this uh, screen supports, I've only found this with Forza Horizon uh, games, when you turn it up to 120 FPS, it does uh, stutter and lose a lot of frames for some reason. So the best settings is 60 FPS uh, on Forza Horizon games. However, CSGO and a lot of other games, uh, even Need for Speed Heat, don't know if that supports 120 fps but they all run perfectly fine so let's jump into forza horizon 5. so for you guys who want to see the fps i have got an fps counter right here and it should be clear enough for you guys okay so before in, uh, so before getting into some actual gameplay on forza horizon 5 i wanted to actually make sure if the uh, drivers for this RTX 3050 were up to date uh, which they weren't so we should be back after this update is done because we want to squeeze all the performance out of this RTX 3050. Okay, and we're back from doing the updates. Now, we're finally playing Forza Horizon 5. And you guys can see the FPS counter there. So let's get into some driving. Uh, so looking from the camera, uh, the screen's going to be very fuzzy for you. Because we are filming in 4K 30fps. But you guys should be able to get a rough idea of what it's like. Plus you guys have got the FPS counter in the top corner. Now after doing the update, even though I restarted the game, for some reason it's still going above 60 FPS, even though I added a cap, which is a little unusual. Let me just get rid of this route. There we are. And we're on the Horizon Highway at the moment and we've averaging 60 plus fps i don't know i think the fps counter in this game is broken guys that's why i'm not doing a solid uh, benchmark test or anything on this game because it still needs a lot of things fixing okay so highway we're averaging 60 fps or more which isn't bad let's actually fast travel to another location where i know the graphics uh, where the fps will probably start to dip a bit and that is around here where this Horizon Festival is. And then when you're in the pause menu, it automatically caps at 30 FPS. Okay, so here we're definitely going to have... Yeah, so here we're getting around 50 to 60 FPS. Yeah, we well, might as well go through the jungle. Not the jungle, the forest. Yeah, around 50 FPS. And this part of the map, I know takes its toll on this laptop FPS okay yeah it's, it seems to handle it pretty good on medium high settings I guess you could put in high settings but then you'd probably have to put uh, a 40 or 30 FPS cap this game allows 40 FPS caps um, or maybe it could run at 60 but you'd be running either 50s or low 50s for the FPS Okay, so not that bad. Now let's actually, now let's jump into some CSGO. Okay, so now we're on CSGO. So first things first, I've got to move the laptop a bit because I'm going to have to use my actual mouse for this because using the trackpad uh, isn't the best idea. And for those of you who are going to be gaming on FPS games with this laptop, definitely invest in a mouse because the trackpad isn't ideal. 
it's probably not ideal on any laptop uh, to play games so let's uh, let's uh, get started so you guys can see the fps count right there let's let's lock let's lock the focus so on this home screen we're average we're getting 117 fps 120 fps okay so because i'm a noob at this let's go let's forget official matchmaking we're gonna have to train with some bots practice with bots and yeah sure why not let's go to the nuke okay so that map isn't available uh yeah let's just go to overpass we can go here and go I wonder if I put the brightness up, could it fix the problem with the flickering? Yeah, no, it just overexposes it. So let's put that right back down. Focus here again. Okay, so. I am using a laptop keyboard. I'm just using an external mouse because the trackpad is garbage uh, for when you're playing games. So we'll do counter terrorists and yeah. Okay, 140, 160 FPS. Uh, and just to show you guys the settings, let's go to the settings menu, video, and you guys can see everything is on high. So basically maxed out settings. I don't think you can get any more than that. Yep, it's just high. Yep, uh, so everything is maxed out here. Let's get you guys focused again. Here we are, right, let's get into this. So just here, we're getting 100, 100 plus FPS. You're not going to get anything lower than at least 80 FPS with all high settings on this game. I have tested it out quite a bit. And the reason why I've got the speakers off is so that you guys can actually hear the... Oh, we can't shoot for some reason. This is not good. My gun's disabled or something. Whoa. Yeah, this is this is what happens when you're not prepared. Why can't I shoot? Okay, so nothing seems to be working. No the mouse or the trackpad. Let's get into this bot. Yeah. Oh well that worked. What are we using? Looks like we're going to have to use our knife, which isn't ideal. Who's shooting? I can't see him. Very hard looking from another camera to another camera, guys. Another, looking at two displays when there's... Yeah, that was going to end badly anyways. You can't bring a knife to a gunfight. Okay, so you guys probably got a good idea for the FPS. Hopefully you guys could see it in that corner. Well, we're going super same speed now. All right, I think we'll end CSGO there. So we weren't, uh, so not bad FPS. We were getting mostly above 70 FPS. I can say that uh, con uh, confidently. We were getting 70 FPS and above. So that's pretty good. So let's actually go out to CSGO and head to some Need for Speed Heat. Okay, so now we're jumping into some Need for Speed Heat. Now, just to keep this video short for you guys, um, I did say we were going to do some rendering. However, I have a better idea. What I'm going to do is this video that's going to be coming out soon to the Gamers Edition channel. I'm going to edit, render all the stuff on this laptop for this video. Uh, so however the laptop comes out is however, is however good the laptop did. So let's jump into some Need for Speed. By the way, the video will be in 4K for this in-depth review. Um, however, it depends on how long it takes YouTube to actually process it to become 4K. So most of you guys will probably be seeing it in 1080p. Okay, so now we're playing Need for Speed. You guys can hear the fans slowly ramping up. Let's get into some gameplay on Need for Speed. So just on this home screen bit, we're getting above 60 FPS. I have, uh, I think the FPS in this game is automatically just unlocked for PC, obviously, because in the video or graphic setting, you can't actually uh, cap or do anything with the FPS. It's just the quality and the resolution scale that you can change. So we want to play solo.
let's actually see how long it takes now uh, this game is actually on a new uh, m.2 that i've installed into this computer and instead of telling you guys i might as well show you so this is the new m.2 that i've actually got in this system in this laptop it's the western digital black series sn750 uh, it's a 500 gigabyte hard drive with a read and write uh, with up to a 3430 uh, read lecture wherever the heck that means all I know is that WD, the WD black series is pretty fast okay so we'll jump into night mode because day mode we're gonna get good FPS anyways but we wanna push this thing to its limits by the way all the drivers on this laptop are all up to date if I haven't already said that okay this thing is really struggling Yeah, so you can see in each of speed here, especially at night, this thing struggles a lot. This is actually quite odd because sometimes it runs this game pretty well, but then sometimes it runs it pretty t trash. So, I guess it's showing its trash side today. Yeah, and then in some areas it's not doing bad FPS where the... It looks actually okay. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend this laptop to people who are who are doing heavy gaming. I'd recommend they get something uh, with a lot more power. The CPU isn't to blame here. It's mostly the graphics uh, card. Six cores and six threads are pretty good for gaming. However, the RTX 3050 that's in this laptop uh, lets it down quite a bit. Uh, when it comes to hardcore gaming or intensive graphics stuff however moving on however moving on i wanted to talk to you guys about what i actually use this laptop for so you guys can see that i do have some games installed so obviously i do play games i do a bit of light gaming in my spare time um but mostly i use this for as a workstation computer for my college so i do a lot of uh, rendering so a lot of video stuff whilst i'm there uh, I do a lot of uh, CAD work, computer aided design, uh, so that's a lot of rendering work too. And then obviously the normal Word documents, PowerPoints, things like that. And this thing, this for me, this thing is pretty good. It goes through everything buttery smooth and does everything I want it to do. However, for those of you who are hardcore gamers or uh, need something that can manage hardcore graphics, definitely do not choose this. Uh, Definitely get something with a better graphics card or a better CPU or both. Uh, but this for hardcore graphics or intensive things like such as gaming, I uh, wouldn't recommend it. Now, let's go to the previous video and answer some of your guys' questions. Okay, so we're in the comment section of the previous video that I made for this laptop. Okay, so Josh Daniel said for the price that this lap for the price that laptop is looking pretty good can't wait for the in-depth review as i'm looking for a laptop for cad uh cad work on the go okay so uh josh daniel this laptop is pretty it's a pretty good laptop for cad work on the go i personally use uh, i personally use autodesk fusion 360 and it handles that buttery smooth when rendering and adding other things uh, to your render uh, another person said definitely getting this laptop just finished watching ltt's video on buying a laptop for school and this one with the r5 and rtx gpu will be amazing for what i need it for so razorcon that's good for you uh another person asked also does the laptop remain warm during sleep and the person who asked this was the android minimalist now uh, depending on what uh sleeping state you have it on so the current sleeping state i have it on is untouched it's just what comes out from the factory uh if you've had an intensive gaming session or you've been doing some intensive work and you put the laptop onto sleep which is just closing the screen the laptop will remain hot and the fans will turn on and off whilst the laptop is actually in sleep uh, just to keep everything cool so yes it does remain uh, warm 
and another person asks what's the what gpu is in this uh, laptop and the gpu in this laptop is a rtx 3050 4 gigabyte uh, of ddr of vram okay another person asks does it have upgradability for ram and storage yes it does have upgradability for ram and storage you can upgrade the ram all the way to uh, 64 gigabytes uh, with 320 uh, 3200 megahertz and the storage yes it is upgradable all you need is a bracket which i'm going to uh, put a code for on the screen right now and the next question is can this play microsoft flight simulator 2020 now so from what you guys saw in the need for speed heat gameplay if microsoft uh, flight simulator is very so if Microsoft uh, Flight Simulator is very optimized, uh, like for example CSGO or maybe Forza Horizon 5 at that stage, uh, then I guess it could run it because as you guys saw, Need for Speed here was running like trash. However, Forza Horizon 5 uh, and Forza Horizon 4 run pretty good on this laptop because they're probably optimized a lot better. So I can't give you an opinion on that. Uh, you'd have to do a bit more research if this thing can run Microsoft Flight Simulator. Um, but I'll just give you uh, some a rundown of the specs of what this comes with as standard. So the specs for this laptop is obviously you know it has 120 hertz uh, refresh rate screen. It has the AMD Ryzen 5 5600H, the Nvidia GeForce RTX 3050 with four gigabytes of GDDR6 VRAM. Uh, it has a 250 nits anti glare LED backlit display, eight gigabytes of RAM, and a 256 gigabyte SSD. However, when you get this, uh, it'll say 200 because 56 gigabytes is taken up by the Windows Essentials and other things like that. And it comes with Windows 10 Home and it does actually have uh, the Windows 11 upgradability pack. So if I uh, head to settings now, take you guys to settings and check for updates. You guys can actually see that. Oh, disappear. oh, there we are. This PC can run Windows 11 and you can update it from here if you're ready to install Windows 11. And this laptop has a 15.6 inch uh, display. And the color that I've got this one in is gray. It's got Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, all the other, all the essentials that you need, basically. Okay, I'm going back to the Q&A. So... Uh, the Android Minimalist has another question. I'm barely getting two hours of YouTube playback. I have the 120 hertz panel and the brightness is set to less than 50%. Mine is the 56 watt hour battery, though I still should be able to get at least three hours. So uh, I did a bit of digging and it appears that I have the same laptop as the Android Minimalist with the 56 watt hour battery. However, mine averages me on a school day, a college day, uh, it averages me around six hours. And if I probably didn't do any uh, small gaming sessions, it'd probably get me closer to nine hours. So I guess this is a problem with some people, but it could also depend on things that you're running in the background. Uh, for me, when I'm done with something, I just uh, straight away turn it off in the background so that we're not uh, using any excessive battery. So another person asks, can you compare it with the Legion counterpart? So if you guys actually want me to do that, you guys are going to have to get this video to, to some insane amount of views uh, to make that possible. Another person asked, how is your battery backup? Mine, the battery backup on this laptop is pretty okay. Pretty good. Uh, and that is it for the questions. There might be another one. Let's look. Okay, so Venom Gaming. There you guys can see. Uh, Venom Gaming said, Hey, is it worth for 3D rendering and editing? What about the battery backup? What problem do you face with this laptop? Because I was going to buy one in a few days. Okay, so for 3D rendering, uh, if you're using Autodesk 360 Fusion, uh, this thing's pretty good. I screwed up that name. Uh, Fusion 360. Um, if you're going to use that on this, and a lot of others work pretty well on this laptop, they work buttery smooth. Uh, so problems I'm actually having with this laptop is just the gaming performance side, so when you're doing intensive things. But at this price range of £750, you can't really complain about that. Because you're getting notebooks at this price range, which are actually £800, £900, which don't even have dedicated graphics. So for this to be able to play games at... A decent FPS in my books is a, is pretty good. 
Okay, and that's it for all the questions from the previous video. Uh, one thing I'd like to say is thank you for all the likes on the previous video. We got 40 likes. So thank you guys for that. And now it's time for my conclusion on this laptop. So if you're going to be doing things like I have said, so you're going to be using it for either school, college, university, uh, and you just want to do a small, a small bit of gaming whilst you're there, we want to use it for editing, uh, doing a lot of typing on Word documents, PowerPoint, uh, doing CAD, uh, computer aided design work, then this laptop is pretty good because that Ryzen CPU has six core, six threads, which is more than enough, and the dedicated RTX 3050 with four gigabytes of VRAM is more than enough to handle all those things. However, if you want, if you're the type of person who's a on the go gamer, hardcore gamer, then definitely wouldn't get this laptop. I'd definitely go for something uh, with better graphics and a better CPU. So that's my conclusion on this laptop. So if you like what we do around here, guys, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video. If you guys have any more questions, I'll make a follow up video on this laptop. So feel free to put those questions down in the comment section down below.